We have this train here, this old steam locomotive here going over this bridge, which kind of looks kind of old. So I thought maybe we'll give it an old timey look and I'm going to show you how I did that. So we start out with this and we end up with an image looking like this. This was a lot of fun. So without any further ado, let's get started. Oh, but before we do, I'm going to link this uh, image in the description below. That way you can follow along with me and that's a lot of fun and it's a great way of learning. So let's get started. I'm starting out in uh, Photoshop and using Photoshop as a plugin, but you could start out in Luminar 4, but I'm going to show you my workflow here, all right? So I went ahead and made a duplicate of my uh, background layer just so we can work non-destructively. And I'm going to come up to Filter and open up Luminar 4, and we will get started. I wrote myself some notes, so you'll see me looking at my notes from time to time. But the first thing I did was came to the black and white conversion tool right here. Now, I'm not making a black and white conversion out of this. I'm clicking on saturation. I really love this feature in the black and white conversion tool. And what I basically did was took my red up to 100. Because I really love the red on this train here, okay? Or actually, no, I took it up to 200. Okay, and then I went to my yellows and took those up to right around 81, somewhere right around in there. 80 is good. And greens, I bumped my greens up to 83. This is a really nice selective way of adjusting color on your image. And, you know, I'm going for that old-fashioned look, which is really nice. Secondly, I went to my uh, color module here, or my color tool, I should say. And I pulled my saturation back and pulled the saturation back to um, minus 17. And my vibrance, I took it up to about 11. And then I opened up my advanced settings here. And uh, then I took my red and, let's see, it took it up to 20... Uh, Took my hue to 24, so I altered the red hue just a little bit and went to my saturation and pulled it up to around, uh, right around 80 something like that. And let's see, then the luminance level, I brought it back to like a minus 35 just to darken things up a little bit, right around there. So that was that, and then I went to the orange color here. And I uh, took my orange back to around a minus 24, somewhere around there. See, because I wanted to ease off on the oranges a little bit. So somewhere right around here. And then I went to my green tones and I altered my hue on the greens. I took my hue to like around a minus 20. So I took it more into yellow tones. See if I keep dragging it to the left. See, watch these tones down in here. And also in the trees here. So I wanted to get those a little closer to yellow, but I wanted to maintain green. So I came to around, like I said, around a minus 20 right there. You know, just took some of the heavy green off because, again, I'm going for that old-fashioned, old-timey look. Uh, and then the saturation I took to a 30. Just built that saturation up a little bit. I'm going to go to about a 27, and the luminance level, I took it to like a minus 10, just to pull back on the luminance a little bit. Minus 10. There's minus 11. Anywhere in there is looking really good. And let's click this eyeball so we can say here's the before and here's the after. All right, so a few little changes already. All right, and next I went to AI Accent or AI Enhance and use the AI accent inside of AI Enhance. All these names, they drive me nuts. All right, so I took this up to around a minus 23. And as, you've, as you know, if you watch some of my videos in the past, how oh, I love the uh, AI accent. It's really a cool tool. And then I went to next to AI structure, and I wanted to build up the structure a little bit. This is another really cool tool. And what did I do here? I went up to about around a 50 somewhere in there right around there now let's click this uh, toggle right here so here's before and here's after but that really brings out some nice structure and it's really making this image start to pop a little bit uh, next I went to advanced contrast and you're gonna find that in the pro uh, tab right here and I just did a video recently on advanced contrast it's a really really cool tool so let's open up uh, advanced contrast again found in the pro uh, 
tab and let's see I start out with my highlights and my highlights I took up to about a 36 somewhere right around in there and then I worked with the balancing point now the balancing point I came to was and this is the most uh, this is the key to understanding this tool getting the balance point right so I was at around the 22 but you notice when you pull that and what's your image when you pull this balance point you can see how how the image changes. See, if I move it to the left, it gets really blown out in the highlights. But the best way to adjust this tool is uh, start pull up your contrast, your like your highlight contrast, you know, somewhere around 50 or less, um, and then work with your balance just till it looks till it looks good to your eye. And I was right around, like I said, I was right around 22 when I felt it looked right. And then again, you can come to your contrast here and give it more or less depending what you like and I might even give it a little bit more because I said around 36 but here I am around 52 and I'm liking that then the midtones I pulled that up to around 50 and then I started to move my balance point there and I came up with a balance point of around minus 28 now I'll take it to the right first so you can see then I took it to the left but I came to around like a minus 28 somewhere in there and again, you just adjust it to taste, whatever you think looks good. If you want a little more contrast, you can change that balance point. But again, I, I like to round minus 28. I thought that looked pretty good. I might just take it to like a minus 22. That's looking nice. And then let's go with shadows contrast. I was at 44 here. And let's get it as close to 44 as I can. 44, and then my balance point was... Uh, Balance was at 47. Was I at a minus? No, I was at a, at a plus 47. Somewhere right around in here. Because I wanted to bring up some of this higher uh, shadow contrast areas. Make them a little more contrasty. So, let's see. Yeah, maybe, maybe a 37. And let's toggle this. Here's the before and here's the after. But a nice little uh, change in the image right there. I love this tool. And if you, like I said, if you can understand, go back and watch my um, video on advanced contrast because I break this tool down. But it's the, uh, the thing you really have to understand is how this highlights balance works. And I really explain that in, in that video. So get it, go back and watch that one, okay? All right. And now the next thing I did was added some film grain now the film grain is found in the creative tab here and here it is right here film grain and let's see what did I do here I added a amount of like uh, 31 so let's pull this up to about 31 31 and then I opened up my advanced settings and I changed my size took my size up to around 41 because again I'm looking for that old timey look old-fashioned look and you know those old images had a lot of grain in them so I thought some grain would look nice and then I changed my roughness to about a 39 but I but I like that so let me see here's a toggle this uh, toggle right here here's the before the grain and here's the after but it adds a nice little effect right there we're almost done uh, we're gonna go into the pro tab here and we're gonna come to split toning love split toning as well and what did I do here I added to the highlights I added some warmer tones to the highlights so my hue here is around a 32 let's get it right on 32 and my saturation is at 66 you can watch this color swatch change here too. Watch when I pull up this, see how the saturation goes up here. This color changes here and also on your image. But it, this swatch is nice so you can get an idea of how much of that tone you're adding in there. So again, I wanted to be around a 66. Something like that. Um, and again, the hue is at 32. So just adding a nice warm tone to my highlights because again, it's an old timey look. I want it to look yellowed and weathered a little bit. In the highlights and then the shadows let's see I cooled down the shadows here so let's I'll put my saturation up first because usually I like to pull the saturation up first so you can actually see the color it's getting added so I was at the saturation I was around a around a 43 somewhere in there and the hue I was at uh, 238 which is in the blue tones 
like right here. See that? That's in the blue tones there. And then the balance can the balance slider is very important here because you can uh, balance it more towards the blue tones or more towards the orange tones or the yellow tones here. And again, you can just pull the slider and stop when you think it looks really good to your eye. And that's at minus 15. Actually, my balance I had originally was around a 5. So I was around a 5. And do I still like that? You know, things change, you know. I might be in a cooler mood now. Now nah, I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna go with let's go with a let's go with a four. How about that? There's a nice compromise. Went from a five to a four. Okay. And then the last thing I did was came to the essentials here. And um what did I do here in the essentials? I added a little bit of vignette, so I came to the vignette tool. And let's open up advanced settings too. So on the vignette, I went pretty heavy here. I went to like a minus 79 and right there. And the size, I was at a 71 on the size. And uh, the roundness, I was at 17. So right around there, 17, and the feather, I took my uh, feather the whole way up to, actually the roundness I want, 17, not the feather, Dave, the roundness, 17. Roundness, 17, and the feather I took up to 100%, and I like that. Now let's click this toggle, here's a before and after, so a nice effect there, I think that looks really nice. And I think the last thing I did, I don't have this in my notes, but I remember I went to light and I pulled my highlights back just a little bit. I thought they were a little bit strong on the smoke. So I pulled those back to maybe, don't want to go too far back here, but maybe around, uh, yeah, maybe around the 16 right there. So now let's click on the eyeball up here. Here's our before and here's our after. So. I was really happy. It gives me that nice old-fashioned look, and this I, this type of an image really lends itself to that type of a look. Um, now, if you felt you went too far in all your adjustments, you can come up here to the layers right here, click it, and the adjustments amount here. You can take this adjustment amount and start to slide it back. Like if you take it the whole way to the left, you're back to your original image. And then you can just build up slowly. And again, if you felt you went too far in your adjustment, you can ease off a little bit. Like I may want to ease off to maybe around an 86 or an 87. But no, I like it actually the whole way up. Okay, so I'll take it at 100% and like it. Now, if you were working in uh, Luminar 4 as a standalone product, you could just close out Luminar 4 and all your effects would be saved. Now, when I, uh, what I'm going to do, because I started out in Photoshop, is I'm going to click Apply. Now, nothing will get saved in Luminar, okay? But when I go back into Photoshop, all these uh, effects that I've just done here, they'll bake into the image like Luminar 4 will apply it to my image and send it right back into Photoshop when I click Apply. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to click Apply, and we'll go right back into Photoshop here. And there we go. All right, now... Layer 1 is the edit I originally did. Now, if I uncheck or click the eyeball here in background copy, we can see the original edit. And I'm pretty close. The original edit was had a little bit more contrast, but I think I like my new edit better. Now, I'm going to uh, click the eyeball on Layer 1 just to shut it off. So now let's click the eyeball on the background copy and compare it to the original. So here's the before and here's the after. Well... There you go. That was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this. Uh, I hope you download this image and follow along with me. I think it'll really help you. It's fun to really work with Luminar and get really creative. I, I really enjoy that a lot. Um, so give this one a try. Hey, if you enjoyed this one today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified.